Hi, it's Mr. Mac, and today we're going to start the topic of projectile motion. This is an important topic as part of advanced mechanics, and it will take us through to those really important questions that we need to answer in physics. So hold on tight, this is a great journey. Welcome to Mr. Mac's physics channel. He can explain things really well and is a lot of fun to watch. So projectile motion, you can see quite clearly the parabola shape arc. And that's what we're gonna be looking at for the first part of this term. <clears throat> it's not gonna take up the whole term for projectile motion, it's only the first thing. So this is what we're learning to do. And on Friday afternoon, we'll go a little bit more detail. We're gonna use models to explain, analyze, predict projectile motion. And of course, you're gonna be able to do calculation questions and explanation questions, which is what that success criteria is all about. Can you state in your own words? I think I just did. <laughs> um, we'll come back to that on Friday. These are the needs or outcomes. Don't worry about those too much. They're there for reference. By the end of this, you'll understand all of that and blitz it. But, um, so here's another strobe. Uh, a strobe is a flashing light. Uh, taking photos of the same thing at different times. And you can see here, there's a small ball bearing and a larger ball bearing dropped from the same height. And they, at this, as a strobe flashes, they appear at the same height above the ground, regardless of their mass. And that was Galileo's famous experiment or thought experiment with the Leaning Tower of Pisa. He suggested getting up there with two different sizes, two masses, different masses, and dropping them, and they'd land at the same time. Um, so the inquiry question is, how can models that are used to explain projectile motion be used to analyze and make predictions? Well, the story goes, <laughs> Isaac Newton was taking tea under an apple tree one sunny afternoon when an apple dislodged itself and landed on his head. It dawned on Newton that what goes up must come down. And this formed the basis of his universal law of gravity. A tale perhaps, but there's evidence in the writings that at the time that it actually happened. And there's a reference there you can look up if you want to. You could stare at that graphic all day, couldn't you? Ouch. But we're not going to. Ouch. Are you going to have an apple for lunch now? I hope so. Okay. Um, the Bible says a few things about projectile motion. Um, some of it is incidental. Some of it is descriptive. Some of it is, um, well, look at the last dot point there. Jonah, who said to the sailors, pick me up and throw me down into the sea uh, because he was running away from the God. So they picked up Jonah and threw him down into the sea. And he probably followed projectile motion. Till he went splash. <clears throat> uh, what does it say about gravity? Um, well, God created gravity to hold the stars, planets, natural satellites in place, and he continues to sustain the universe. And that's what it says in Colossians 1, for by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, including gravity. All things were created through him and for him, and he is before all things, and in him all things consist. Well, let's start thinking about weight. Uh, I know that in online learning and lockdown, that my weight has increased, probably due to lack of exercise. Well, the weight of an object is calculated by the formula Fw equals mg. Fw means the force of weight or the force due to gravity. And M is the mass and G is acceleration due to gravity. That's nice and easy. When you release an object from a height, it'll fall obviously towards the center of the earth. We call that down. Our experience tells us that a bowling ball will fall faster than a feather. You'd agree with that. But is it due to the weight of each object? It's worth thinking about. If you have two objects that are the same size but have different masses and you drop them from the same height, 
what happens? Do they fall at the same rate? Why is it that feathers and a bowling ball, for example, don't fall at the same rate? And is there a way that we can test? Well, we can watch in our next video a little bit more about projectile motion and answer some of these questions. I'm Mr. Mack. Thanks for watching.